right, all right. Hey, I have 10 minutes, so, because I don't want to rush, but I want to tell you guys this. Like, I had the most, I'm, I'm in my, my, uh, I feel like I'm a gas maintenance guy, or um, the Umbrellas de Cherbourg. There's a movie, French movie, and the gas station attendants are wearing this in like the 40s or whatever, whenever that was made. But anyway, my name is Dr. Cheryl Meyer, and oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm a psychologist in my day job, but I, um, I have a passion for knowing love and for helping other people get free. Oh, look, look again. I saw the XO before, I can't, look, I'm seeing the XX again. I'm just walking on this part of the sidewalk. So I don't know if you see the XX, but had lots of kisses. I'm feeling so much love today. And yesterday was like the worst at the beginning, the worst, I tell you. And so, um, look, there's like a leaf falling right there, right beside us. Um, I was taught by a Native American Christian shaman, <laughs> Red Elk, you know, that when, when the tree's giving you something, it's just because it wants to, it's a gift. But anyway, I like the magical like that, but not magical where you're seeking any kind of weird occult stuff. I'm not, I don't recommend that at all. Um, so, uh, cause you don't need that. You don't need that. You really don't need that. But your egotism will tell you that you do. And so, um, so, um, I want to respect someone's privacy. I'm over, I'm in a common area, but by their house. So I'll come over this way. I'll sit on the hill. Right. So I teach people to how to listen to your own intuition, which is your inner knowing today. Um, so, uh, so many breakthroughs happened yesterday, but I wanted to, I wanted to teach. I wanted to equip you guys with it so that you're not left without because there's this verse that says, uh, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And I don't want anyone perishing. I don't want anyone to be without love. I want you to know love, you know, and to be free. And feel some light on your face, you know. I see the dust cloud disappear without a trace. All right. And so today I was thinking, okay, what, what is the phrase that we can place this under? We can say what, what we're teaching is, uh, is about, it's about receiving real love, true love, true love. Finally, we get to have true love and what real humility is. And I'm saying this as a psychologist, but not as your psychologist, because uh, I can't do that, you know. I think this is just for entertainment purposes, officially. Uh, so if you need a psychologist or you'd like one, then go find a professional. Because I studied for 22 years doing this. I practiced and I studied nine years before that, getting my doctorate. So, um, I was, I was, um, uh, I'm like this, this, uh, challenged yesterday by a sister, like I'll say that a sister in Christ, uh, but I welcome all religions, but Latoya Okia put out a video and she was saying, I challenge you to go back and look at, uh, she was saying how God created the world with certain laws like gravity and there are certain moral laws or principles. And when you're going against those, you're bringing hell to yourself in a way. And so she's like, I, I challenge you in any um, failure of your life or whatever, to go back and look at how you were walking in a different direction than, than let's say gravity, you know? And so let me explain this a little bit more. As a psychologist, I see it and, and I worked with clients this morning. so. I still, I saw it, it was all active in my mind. And so it was so helpful to all of us. But, um, oh, 
Sweet. There's a there's <laughs> the ship. <laughs> um, it was so active in my mind that um, when you when you are in a place where you are trying to secure your own love, when you go back, let's say from childhood, right, and um, I only have like a few minutes, so let's get to it, is let's say you were waiting and waiting for the love of your parents to show up. And if, if I kept trying to get that love by proving myself to some noble man, <laughs> you know, in, in my marriage or whatever, um, that would be, that could be me. That could be me stuck in this childlike pattern, stuck in a childlike pattern, um, trying to please, trying to please, because this is how I learned in childhood. This is how all of us learn. I represent, you know, the collective. That's why I talk about me because I can just be open about me and I'm so private about other people. Otherwise, I talk all about other examples. But So I'm not talking about me to talk about me. That's boring. But uh, I'm just talking because it's like, what if, right? Um, I kept trying to secure my own love. And what if the divine, what if uh, the divine uh, love God is love. When you know love, when you love, you know God, because God is love. What if the divine was trying to give us love all the time, but we kept saying, I don't trust your love because the people that tried to love me in childhood were not trustworthy and they left me feeling broken and alone. And so I'm going to try to secure it through alcohol or drugs or being super spiritual, you know, or reading books all the time. And there's nothing wrong with looking for wisdom and wanting to gain in wisdom, but in, um, you know, weird spiritual ways or in um, trying to please certain groups of people or trying to join all these expensive clubs, you know, and I, I didn't know how to be humble. And let's say, uh, and I couldn't see the love that was right in front of me. Everyone says that, oh, the love was always right in front of you. And you're like, what? Just show it to me. But you couldn't, as long as I keep holding my fist and saying, I insist on doing it this way. And I used this morning, I used the example of my weight loss again, you know? It's like, um, I had been trying and trying and trying to lose weight my whole life, pretty much. And I just constantly felt rejected. And so I didn't know I was using weight as a way to say, oh, this must be why, if I was just the perfect weight. You know, even when I got down, um, you know, to a low, a normal weight, let's say, and part of high school, I was just like, if I could just be at that, then I would stop being rejected, but it didn't work. It didn't work. But it was something that was in my hands that I kept trying to control. And so imagine when you open your hand, it's like, it's like, a, you know, I have the X and the O. Look at this cross as the X and the O. You're dying to your old self, your child self that insist on getting it by trying to prove yourself and earn the worth. And you come back into the oneness, this O. You know, the O is on the back, on the front too, but it's like, I see X and O, and we saw the XX. Maybe it's a double cross this time, you know? Or, oh, I die and I'm with you. I give you the kiss, I am with you. It's, it's like, it's, there's a saying that we share the sufferings with Christ on the cross. Invite cross, invite Christ to come with you as you bear your cross, right? When I was like, I'm, I'm just not going to reject myself anymore for my weight. I'm like, I'm tired of that. It's so boring to keep rejecting myself and accepting that rejection from childhood and replaying it over and over again and using weight as an excuse. I couldn't come up with a reason why I would be constantly rejected. So I just came up with the weight and it's like I carried the weight of the world and the weight of my parents and the weight of a lot of rejection for a long time. 
And when I was just like, you know what, I'm just gonna, I, and I know people say this all the time, but I'm just gonna love myself as I am. I'm just gonna, how about I do that? How about I do that? Um, it was like, then I just realized today, after what Latoya had said and after applying it, you know, even though I've lost, I lost all the weight, but um, internally, I was still trying to understand. I just got it today that I was getting in the way of the love. I was saying, I was saying, no, she can't be loved anymore. She can't be loved until she, she performs for me. And so look in your own life. I'm saying all this so you can look in your own life how you are saying, I'm not going to love you until you perform for me. You have to perform. Because that's pride, mister. That's pride, missus, miss, miss, mister, whoever you are. It's a form of hidden pride. And, and pride blocks us from love. You know, when, when we just say, I'm going to stop trying to get the love from my parents. Let's just say they didn't know how to do it or whatever. And I'm going to accept the love that's already there waiting for me. All right, I wish you love.